Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Saturday on Gender Career Chat. This is my second video of the day. Um, I missed my Thursday day, so I'm just I'm just trying to get caught up, and I have the opportunity to do it now. So we always say, like, more videos, the better. So, yeah, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so I've missed a few weeks, and um, it's really important to me you know, to be a part of this channel, and I'm not doing a very good job, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, there was a viewer question, I think it was three weeks ago, about um, family, um, and what do your family and friends um, think, and how do they feel, and all that. Um, kind of an interesting question, I was thinking about it, and then I decided this was the day that I was supposed to make the video, on the morning, I actually called my mom and, um, you know, just had a conversation with her about it, um, just so I could get, like, a really accurate, uh, perception, rather than kind of just giving my, you know, <laughs> kind of just guessing or, you know, what I thought, um, so my mom said that it really wasn't a big surprise, and when I came out, it was just, like, just kind of another thing like I was already I was already she used the word lesbian I wouldn't um, I didn't really identify as a lesbian I identified as gay um, but you know she interpreted that as lesbian um, so you know and I was also really weird and um, she didn't say this but I mean all of these things that to me were kind of big deals that, sh you know, when I was a kid and stuff, and not just a kid, but when I was young, and she just completely kind of, I think parents, sometimes kids say things, and parents don't really take it seriously, even though it was, like, serious to me, um, so, it, but I think her sort of, you know, not being surprised at all maybe had something to do with, like, just all of that stuff kind of, you know, creating this picture of, me and who I am for her anyway. Um, I have a very sort of liberal family, so, you know, there isn't a lot of distinction between the males and females in terms of what it means to be male and female in my family socially. Um, obviously, physical body and pronouns, um, but people don't really, I mean, I guess there's, like, one of my aunts and uncles, um, they have some ideas about, like, the differences between men and women, um, but mostly, I mean, in our family, like, it doesn't mean, you know, any of these, like, you know, cooking or cleaning or, like, any of those kind of, like, traditional social things, like, don't, you know, aren't part of our family culture, so, you know, women in my family, women are engineers and mathematicians and, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, so it's not, um, like, it, it doesn't mean anything sort of socially, um, to them, so that could be another reason why it wasn't, like, she just wasn't surprised by it, um, and one of the things she did say, though, is when I first started talking to her about it, I was talking to her from the point of view of, like, a trans, um, person, because I do feel quite trans, and at the beginning of my gender journey, I s sort of thought that I really would have liked to transition, and even now, I, you know, if I didn't have other medical problems, um, if I had the option, if I could, like Matt has said many times in this channel, if there was some magic box I could walk through and come out the other side, I would not look like this. Like, I would have a male body and be male. Um, but, you know, it's not the way it is. <laughs> but, like, I don't sort of need it bad enough to kind of go through a lot of the medical stuff. Um, but when I first started talking to my mom about it, her sort of main concern and sort of like, oh my god, here we go again kind of feeling was more about the medical stuff, um, because I've had so many medical problems, um, in my life, and she's, you know, I, 
she was watching like YouTube videos about um, you know going on testosterone and all of these things and I could just like because I I showed them the showed her the videos and everything and like I could see on her face like it was troubling but what was troubling for her was like oh my gosh like here's here who's gonna like who's already had all of these problems and all of this crap to deal with and here's one more thing that you know Kira's gonna have to go through that is gonna be you know hard on their body and <laughs> all of that so that was more the kind of main concern I guess um but people like I mean my mom said you know people knew me and know me as who I am and um they don't tend to um like it's like with anyone once you know somebody and you know somebody as a human being you know seeing them as male or female doesn't really make much of a difference and so it hasn't really I mean it wasn't really that hard for anyone um yeah the other thing what did she say can't really remember oh pronouns we talked about pronouns because one thing that my family has a very hard time with is pronouns um and this is evident um and this again this actually goes back to another question that i had missed um they have a really hard time using the pronoun they and according to them it's not because um it's not because they don't understand why it's important it's because they don't think that they, which is a plural, you know, which has been used to describe, like, a plural person, should be used um, as, like, a singular pronoun. So they have a really hard time with the language of it and not so much the meaning of it, but changing their language. Um, my mom says that she's gotten to the point where when I say they, because, again, because I'm in a relationship with Matt, who is also genderqueer and who goes, um, uses they as um, their pronoun, um, I use, like, pronouns come up for us sort of more often because we refer not just to each other as you and I, but we refer to like a third party, as in we refer to Matt, as I say they and my parents say he, which really, I mean, it annoys me, it upsets me because Matt is my partner and I want, you know, I want to protect them. I want to have their, you know, what, who they are and what's important to them be recognized and when my parents refer to me as she, when I can, you know, when I overhear them talking about me um, as a third party and they refer to me as she, um, it, it upsets me, it annoys me, but it doesn't kind of grate on me the same way that it does when I hear them referring to Matt as he. Um, and so I, I had to talk to my mom about pronouns and, you know, sort of why it's important. And she said, she was like, you know, it would be easier if there was another word. And she's like, you know, I, it would be easier to introduce another word than to change, you know, the language that she's been speaking for, you know, 60 some odd years. So I, sorry, mom, I just inter, <laughs> I just told the internet how old you are. Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to restart it though. But yeah, um, yeah, so I did tell her about um, Z and those gender-neutral pronouns. Um, she sort of like brings it back always to when uh, she was, you know, she was sort of coming of age in like the 70s where the, um, you know, feminiz feminism and feminist re revolution and all that kind of stuff. and. Uh, they started using Ms, like MS, as a prefix to their name. Um, and that was something that, like in her, like in our day and age, like that would be completely normal for me. Like I can't, 
if somebody, I mean, I've had it before, especially in the States, when I've been to the States and people call me miss, like, it makes me angry. Like, my blood just freaking boils. Like, it makes me so mad. Um, Ms, like, MS is not as offensive. And that was sort of the point, was to introduce something that wasn't as offensive. Um, and that, you know, has obviously caught on, because that's, at least here, that's sort of what we use, you know, if you don't. Like, that's just what you use in the same way that you use Mr. Um, so she says, you know, like, it was hard, but at least we we introduced a new word, and we used that word, and, you know, that's, you know, sort of, it caught on, and it's been a really great, good thing for society. So she does understand, you know, the meaning of language and why language is important. She just can't get her mind wrapped around changing what she already knows. Um, but when I sort of have introduced to her these other pronouns, like the other gender neutral pronouns, um, she hasn't tried to use those either. So, and dryer, dryer's done. <laughs> um, yeah, so she hasn't really tried to use those, but you know, I think maybe it's because I don't use them. Maybe if I were to start referring to Matt as Z um, rather than they, maybe that would catch on. I don't know. It's hard. I mean, I, like Joe said about this topic as well, like I totally recognize, like it is hard to change your language. Um, it's really hard. It's, you know, as I, I feel like it's important, and this is like sort of going back to Matt's video, if you watched Matt's video on this topic, I mean, I feel the same way as Matt does, like it's, it's really important, and yet I don't do it, I don't stick up for myself as much as I should, and when I have stuck up for myself, you end up kind of challenging people, and they can get grumpy about it, so I end up kind of backing off and letting it go, when every single time it happens, it kind of upsets me. Um, and it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't... You shouldn't have to be disrespected. And one of the things when I said to my mom about, like, the new um, pronoun catching on and or versus, like, they catching on and everything, um, you know, she was talking about Ms., which was, you know, it's half the population, whereas you know, genderqueer people or people who, you know, require being, like, require a gender neutral pronoun is such a small, you know, such a small segment of the population that it's not going to catch on in the same way. It's not going to take, like, you know, one generation to catch on. It's going to take a lot longer because you need a lot more exposure for something to catch on, and we just don't quite have that exposure. Um... But again, pronouns and people not respecting my like my choice of pronoun use, I totally understand it. <laughs> so I'm kind of at this place where I'm like, well, it kind of needs to happen. But on the other hand, I totally understand why it's hard, and I don't even really blame them for it. Although I think that, you know, something that's so important to me for the people that are so close to me maybe they should try a little harder. Um, but their response, again, their response is language, like, they refuse to use bad language. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know, like, where to even go with that one. So I'm at 14 minutes. Maybe I should stop. There was another question that I was going to talk about, but I can't even remember what it is now anyway, so maybe I will make a third video today. All right, guys, see you later. Bye.